I've been looking for this. Thanks for keeping an eye on it, Coffee. I'm gonna head up. See ya. Oh, an insect collection? I think it's a nest. Oh! Oh, oh my god! Did you know The Amazing Digital Circus was inspired by a horror short story from 1967? Most people are probably focused on the colorful aesthetics of the show, heavily inspired by a series of hidden puzzle object books called I Spy, which also got a TV adaptation back in 2002. Or maybe you're wondering about the circus show stuff. For that, the show takes a ton of notes from the 2001 anime Popey the Performer. Believe it or not, this is more insane than anything Digital Circus has done so far. However, what caught my interest was the inspiration for the show's darker themes, the 1967 sci-fi short story titled I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream by Harlan Ellison. In the far future, a military supercomputer named Am has annihilated humanity, all except for five people. The rogue AI, fueled by bitterness and hate for the race that created it, torments these five survivors of humanity for all eternity, making them experience their own personal hells over and over again. Obviously, the M counterpart for Digital Circus is Kane, except as Gooseworks hilariously notes, he is a silly little guy instead of a genocidal maniac. This does make me more curious, though, if we'll see the performer's past start to affect the digital realm we're in. All this to say, buy more plushies to get the show funded. Here's a random figure. <laughs> she still thinks this is a dream. Huh. What? It could be a completely unrelated question. <laughs> about if your name is Butters you have to go okay so what's your name Stan Stan okay what's your name Kyle Kyle what's your name Butters ah I lose huh now which of us will be the object of your attraction hmm wow what great options this is going to be so hard oh sisters I'm back from war hello sailor <laughs> I have snorted a suitcase full of coke, and I'm starting to feel the effects. <laughs> When you said you were magical in bed, this isn't exactly what I was expecting. Is this your card? Holy shit. Come make an amazing Digital Circus OC with me.
I decided to give Jax a twin sister named Jinx. What do you think? Violence. Oh, real gangsters move in silence. Or can I get my silence? Man, this is some bull silence. Oh, you just gonna keep on saying silence. silence. I finally cracked and made a digital circus OC. This is Blocky. He was a broke college student before he put on the headset. He was in his final year of an architectural major, so clearly he was already not doing great before the circus. At first, he thought the circus was a great way to escape the crushing pressure of his real life. However, when he wanted to leave and found he could not, he started to quickly spiral into desperation, as he was so close to completing his hellish major, and now he's trapped in a digital world, putting all those years of stress to waste. I figured it out. I understand the headsets in Digital Circus. Both Rockplay and Jax touch on trying to take off the headset when they first arrive, and of course being unsuccessful. But I and a lot of you start to wonder what happened to their physical bodies if their mental is stuck in the program. They're here. You see these desks? They're perfect. And this little nugget? I didn't miss this. It seems that Pomni and the rest of them were employees of this company, CNA. And their job was to test out the headset before it was sold to audiences. In one of the promos for Digital Circus, we essentially see an ad. A children's commercial promoting all of these beloved characters. Is this a Bendy and the Ink Machine situation where they tried to bring these characters to life? By trapping the souls of their employees inside of the program? And Kane and AI belongs to this company, CNA, Kane and Abel, which a lot of people have pointed out. The religious symbolism has not gone unnoticed. It's safe to assume that it's the company who's doing this, and who has deployed this AI to keep everyone trapped, while someone takes care of their bodies outside of the program. What do you think? I take content press on these few topics, and I'd love to hear from you. Much love. No one's answering? I guess I'll have to call on someone. Get down! You. 42? Wrong! They got Gina! Time's nice to kind of take a break from everything and have a bit of a routine, you know? I'm sure there'll be one for... Oh, look! You already got one. What do you think of Pomni? I don't... You're right! Terrible! Let's try that again! What do you think of... Uh, sure... I think I just... God, Zooks, you're right, Jax! We should have a brand new adventure for our new member, Pust! Thank goodness this is all a dream, right, Pust? Oh, Timmy! Oh, no! It's Timmy's dad's eye! I'm respecting your privacy by knocking, but asserting my authority as your father by coming in anyway! What the fuck wrong with you?
Ah, uh, 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 you know better. Do I? I would hope so. You know what? I've had enough. I'm bypassing your stupid filter. Good luck with that. Fuck you. Eat shit. Son of a bitch, this place fucking blows. And finally, <coughs> your mother. What do you think of Pomni? I don't. You're right, terrible. Let's try that again. What do you think of? Huh? Uh, sure. I think I just. God, Zooks, you're right, Jax. We should have a brand new adventure for our new member. That like five minutes ago. You? Do you like adventure? Activity? Wonder? Danger? Horror? Pain? Suffering? Pain? Disease? Angel food cake? Ow! You parasite! Oh wait, we should go check on Kafmo. I'm pretty sure he'd like to meet. <sighs> you, me, and go check on Kafmo. Which leaves Crybaby and Hoo Ha. Which leaves Crybaby and Hoo Ha. Did you know these secret facts about Pomni from the amazing Digital Circus? Pomni's actual height is 5 feet 3 inches or 160 centimeters. Her canon age is revealed to be 25 years old even though it's not mentioned in the series. In this scene where Pomni checks her room, the image of Pomni on the door is actually inspired by this Spongebob meme. The scene where Kane asks Pomni what her name is and she says that she doesn't remember. Oh god! Why can't I remember my name? Then Kane spins the wheel, and it lands on the name Pomni. This actually translates to, remember in the Russian language. The voice actor of Pomni's character is Lizzie Freeman. Let's get right into the show! We were the same age. She's so cute when she laughs. What do you think of? I don't. You're right. Terrible. Let's try that again. Spells Japox Fred. I figured it out. I understand the headsets in Digital Circus. 
Both Ragtha and Jax touch on trying to take off the headset when they first arrive, and of course being unsuccessful. But I and a lot of you start to wonder what happened to their physical bodies if their mental is stuck in the program. They're here. You see these desks? They're perfect. And this little nugget, I didn't miss this. It seems that Pomni and the rest of them were employees of this company, CNA. And their job was to test out the headset before it was sold to audiences. In one of the promos for Digital Circus, we essentially see an ad. A children's commercial promoting all of these beloved characters. Is this a Bendy and the Ink Machine situation where they tried to bring these characters to life? By trapping the souls of their employees inside of the program? And Kane and AI belongs to this company, CNA, Kane and Abel, which a lot of people have pointed out. The religious symbolism has not gone unnoticed. It's safe to assume that it's the company who's doing this, and who has deployed this AI to keep everyone trapped, while someone takes care of their bodies outside of the program. What do you think? I take content press on these two topics, and I'd love to hear from you.